So you've seen how to make simple graphics with processing. Now it's time to actually add some interaction to that. This is one of the really great things that processing lets us do is to actually make our graphics come alive and actually respond to interaction with the computer user. Uh, and we're going to do that through two basic uh, blocks of code that are necessary for building an interaction, and that's setup and draw. Okay, So switching over to processing, you see I've got a very simple three-line sketch which is going to draw a very basic graphic for me. It's just going to create a, uh, a black background and put a white circle in the right in the middle of it. Uh, and I guess part of what I, how I'm doing that is actually using two system variables here, uh, width and height. Okay, Width actually will pull this number this first number from your size function, whatever that is. Uh, height will pull the second number from your size function, whatever that is, the number of pixels that it, your sketch is tall. Uh, and then you can for, perform some math operations on that. In this case, I'm dividing by two to put it in the center of the screen, but if I wanted to put it in the upper quadrant, I could actually divide by four and hit play again, and you notice that now it's moved over here to the upper left-hand quadrant, okay? Um, but moving on to actually using the setup and draw blocks of code. Uh, I'm going to actually t paste those in here real quick and I'm going to move this size first down to the setup. The reason I do that is the setup is the block of code that happens once at the beginning of your interactive sketch. It's going to happen one time and one time only and we don't want to continuously resize our sketch. We want to size it at the beginning and leave it alone basically. Uh, and then I'm going to use these other two lines and move them down into the draw routine. This is the part of the code um, the code block that actually happens over and over again, that repeats, that creates the interactivity. Okay, So in this case, we actually want to draw the background over and over again, and then redraw the ellipse so that it, it changes over time. And if I run it again, you're going to see that there's, there's not really a, a difference in this because nothing is changing. There's no variation here in these two lines of code. Okay, um, That's where we have to actually use these variables in order to our advantage to actually create variation. So let's think of a first, uh, just a, as a first example, let's get the circle to actually follow the mouse. Okay, And in order to do that, we're going to use two other system variables, mouse x and mouse y. Okay, So flipping back over to processing, if I replace this width divided by 4 in this case with mouse x and now run the, the, the sketch you'll notice that the mouse now follows my uh, the circle now follows my mouse excuse me back and forth across the screen okay that's because I have it following the x axis but not the y axis in order to get it to truly follow the mouse up and down I need to now add in the mouse y um, so if I create this and replace it with mouse Y, I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And now I get this interaction where it's following the mouse around the, uh, the sketch. Okay, But again, I don't have to use these both at the same time. If I want to go back to a situation where I want the width to stay at you know, 200 pixels, I can go ahead and hit play there. And now I get the opposite interaction where it stays in the same position on the left and right axis, but it follows the mouse up and down now because it's following that mouse Y. So that's one type of interaction, following the mouse. What if we want to actually uh, use uh, the button on the mouse or some of the keys on the keyboard? We can do those by actually monitoring events. And there's two events that processing is aware of that you can use here very quickly, uh, that being the mouse pressed event or the key pressed event. So switching back over to my processing sketch, if I paste in uh, these two blocks of code, okay, I can actually use these to change the color of my ellipse. So I'll just uh, use the fill command and uh, type in the color red now okay and before I add anything to the key press let me just test to see if that's working so I'll go ahead and hit play and run this okay so you see I've got my white uh, circle that's following the mouse but as soon as I click the mouse it turns red and it continues following but it's now red okay so flipping back over to my processing sketch what if I now want to actually have a key on the keyboard uh, associated uh, actually turn it blue so let's uh, use blue here okay and run my sketch again okay I get a nice white circle as soon as I hit the mouse it turns red it keeps following but as soon as I hit the, something on the keyboard it turns blue and keeps following I can hit the mouse again and it'll change to that and I'll hit another space bar uh, or any key on the keyboard actually will work just so you see 
I can actually change it back and forth. Uh, now I'm starting to build some interaction with these buttons uh, on the, the mouse and the keys on the keyboard. Uh, and this is really the basics of getting things uh, going in processing to actually build some interactive sketches, both using the setup and the draw blocks of code to have things repeat and vary over time, uh, but also using events like mouse pressed and key pressed to interact with some of the hardware on your computer.